Welcome to the Attractors Group Podcast. This is episode 86. Alongside Don Helbig, I'm Ryan, sir. How are you doing today, Don? You know, I'm doing great, Ryan. Just really excited. Today, I booked a flight to New York in early August. Um, going to go to a New York Yankees game against the Toronto Blue Jays, but also going to go to Luna Park in Coney Island. Want to ride the Coney Island Cyclone. Uh, going to go see our good friend, uh, Dino, from mm -hmm. Dino's Wonder Wheel. Going to check that out. Uh, so just really excited about that. That's fantastic. Awesome. Well, before we get started here, just a reminder that we can be found on YouTube by searching for the Attractions Group podcast. We're also available on all your favorite podcast apps if you want to listen to us on the go. Don, what do we have going on today? Well, we have a very special guest, uh, someone that I've been friends with for a while. Uh, they do a lot of great work in the industry. And of course, I'm talking about Jeremy Augenstein from Buckeye Coasters. Hey, Jeremy, welcome, welcome to the show. Hey. Thanks. It's good to see you guys. So, Jeremy, tell us just a, a little bit about yourself and how you got involved in the industry. So, I originally, um, it's very interesting. My parents looked at me and said, Jeremy, you need to get a uh, job at the age of 16. And um, they said, you can flip burgers or you can go work at Kings Island because at the time we uh, lived in Lebanon, Ohio. And so we weren't too far away from the park. And uh, I said I was not going to flip burgers at McDonald's and I was going to go to Kings Island. So when I uh, I think I got my application in the month before I sat there and waited and waited until the day that I turned 16. And then I uh, joined the park and that's where my story began. I was on the at the time drop zone Congo Falls crew and. I got sent around everywhere my first year, but I the night that changed my life forever in the industry was when I uh, was told we were having a crew meeting and I sat in the drop zone restraint and they said that they were going to show us how to check bars correctly. And the crew had known that I had never uh, rode the ride ever in my life. I was terrified to ride it. Um, hadn't really rode much since uh, I was 10 years old when I rode Sea Dragon, and that was not a good experience up at the time, Wyandotte Lake. And I, uh, they sent me up to the top of Drop Tower and dropped me, and my life was forever changed that night, guys. So uh, I worked in the park till I uh, had to stop with uh, college uh, co-op, and uh, ever since then, I've been visiting the park. So now you've started Buckeye Coasters. Yep. What was your primary focus, uh, you know, your inspiration for wanting to start Buckeye Coasters? So I, um, my biggest inspiration was just being able to tell everybody. I know there's a lot of people who don't get to have the opportunities that the both of us get to have in going to parks and experiencing parks and stuff. So I just wanted to be able to bring that to other people who might not be able to have that opportunity. Plus, I just love it. It's a passion. It's something I do. It dictated me becoming a mechanical engineer. I mean, working at Kings Island, I decided I want to become a mechanical engineer because I wanted to follow this industry and one day hopefully be in that industry. And I hope that comes true someday. Um, so I, uh, yeah, that's why we're, that's why I'm here is to share what we do. My kids and I, and my family, we just love going to parks, checking parks out, telling everybody about everything at the parks. So Jeremy, what's the primary focus of Buckeye Coasters and what's, what's your target audience? Like, who are you going for with that? My target audience really isn't your typical coast down determined coaster enthusiast it's more like that person that wants to go and enjoy the park and all aspects of it i'm not really i i know that there's a lot of thrill seekers they want the biggest tallest fastest coaster out there and that's all they care about at the parks but my my goal is to spread the news about what else is going on in the park like the uh dolly parton experience coming to dollywood this year in 2024 like i'm really excited about going down there and sharing that with anybody that might be a Dolly Parton fan that may generate uh, them going to the park. Um, it's always been my um, mission or whatever that 
I am there to promote the parks. It's an honor and it's a great privilege to be part of the media lists for these parks and checking out attractions and everything before the general public and be able to share these great aspects of parks that you may not see on a regular basis or may not see in the news at all. Um, one example would be Wild Adventures um, in Valdesta. Uh, it's amazing. It's a park. I went down there. I got on their media list, went down there to an event. Um, now it's one of my favorite parks out there because it's just so family oriented. There's something for everybody there. It's just um, a goal of mine to just spread the word of how awesome some of these smaller parks are. Um, and not just your big, uh, corporate parks. Yeah, a lot of hidden gems out there. Uh, let's talk about the community a little bit. You know, it's a very passionate community with the enthusiast, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the more single minded, you know, focus someone is about something, the more opinionated they're going to become in the social space. Uh, so how do you manage that on your channels to keep the replies from becoming, you know, too argumentative? That's a really, that's a really tough topic, especially I feel like right now, um, I, it's rare that you're going to see me just say, it's not even rare. I don't just go out there and so-called bash a park or anything like that. I might give my opinion, opinion objectively, um, but it's never going to be in a negative uh, manner because that's just not who I am in general. And Don, you know that from the years that we've been together, right. that that's just not me. Um, I always have the idea of looking at the positive and everything and learning from the positive instead of um, looking at the negative on everything. There's always a positive in something. You know, for your channel, so how do you keep that clean? Like the conversation, you post something. And, um, you know, yeah. they're going to have an opinion of it, but how do you keep it from, you know, everybody starting to go back and forth with each other? And, you know, then it kind of uh, the narrative changes from what you were even talking about. Um, I've actually reached out. I know some pages you'll comment on stuff and you'll never hear from the actual person who runs the page. But I've had many a conversation with people from Buckeye Coasters about um content or what they're saying or comments now i'll occasionally hide a comment um just because it's just not uh correct or the proper place to be putting that comment but we uh my followers seem to respect me and i respect them at the same time and that's why i believe i'm respected by many in the community because i I'm not just going to agree with you, dog you, or anything like that. I'm going to talk it out with you. And I've gained a lot of respect from that, from reaching out to followers and saying, hey, are you sure about this? Did you see this? I've also made sure, too, that when there are controversial topics out there, that I not answer the topic from Jeremy Augenstein, but instead from Buckeye Coasters, because I believe it's good for people like yourselves and us to be commenting on stuff. It, just like, for example, the situation with lightning rod. I know a lot of people are going to be upset with me when I say this. And Don and you and I've had this conversation. There is not a change in the experience after the top of that lift hill, uh, going from a chain to, um, from launch to chain. Um, the ride is still as great as it <laughs> was before. And I know there's a lot of people who are saying that it's not, but I've publicly gone out and I've, I will be proud to say that it hasn't changed in my opinion. It's still the great experience that it was before. Yeah, so and I've done example. the same thing. That's an example where I just, I'm not going to spread negativity in the community because we need to be a family in my opinion. Yeah. So Jeremy, you mentioned, uh, you, you covered how you feel as though there's a mutual respect between you and the people that follow Buckeye Coasters, for example, but let's talk about the parks. You, you've attended a lot of media days and things like that. How did you uh, make your own way into the industry, gaining re respect of the people in PR and media relations and stuff in order to get invited to these events? I think I showed them through promoting their parks and everything and showing the positive aspects, not only just the next biggest ride, but showing all aspects from food to merchandise to even flat ride attractions and stuff. People know that when I'm going to come, they're going to have a positive light in it. And the promotion is not just going to stop at that event or it's not going to stop with just that ride. The promotion is going to continue because in my opinion, 
being on a media list is not just to be like, Hey, I'm on a media list. It's an honor for me. And I'm extremely grateful for the opportunities that I'm given by these parks. It's, it's a privilege to be on a media list. You shouldn't feel like you have to be on it or should be on it. It's a privilege to be on it. And in my opinion, I'm giving back to the park for allowing me that opportunity. Jeremy, we saw each other at Dollywood's press event earlier this mm-hmm. month, you know, had lunch together. Yeah, it was great. Um, what are your thoughts on just the things that park has going on this summer there? They are, in my opinion, doing it right for that. I feel like these parks are going more towards the resort, like, uh, feel where there's something for everyone just not the thrill seeker out there and like i mentioned before the dolly parton experience is unbelievable the different festivals that they have uh, i will always love you is going on right now Uh, another favorite is the flower and food Um, i know you and i discussed the flower and food and how amazing the flower and food festival is to the pumpkins festival there's always something for somebody including blazing fury for your younger riders and then you have lightning rod and and you have Wildwood Grove. It's it's just a park that's doing it right and looking at all aspects of it. And you could be excited about a a new food option and everything else at the same time, new rides too. So, and that food there is very yeah. good, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was very. It was really good. So, Jeremy, uh, you know, if we're going to talk about Dollywood, that seems like it's everybody's maybe top three favorite park, but. Uh, so ride show experience food piece individually what's your one favorite thing at dollywood and why my one favorite yep i would say it's blazing fury (laughs) fire good choice good choice um the reason why is i will never forget my mother um she this or last opening day last year my son was like grandma come ride ride this with us. My mom's never ridden a roller coaster in her life. I'm telling you, never. And so we told her, we're like, I'm like, mom, this is mild. You can do it. Trust me. Not a big deal. And it was by far making memories is what a place like Dollywood's about. And that'll be a memory that I never forget is my son having his hands up in the air as we're going down the the two hills that are in that ride. And my mom screaming bloody murder and absolute not terror, but excitement at the same time. And you know what? She wrote it again that day, but just being able to see her ride with my eight year old son will forever be, uh, um, ingrained in me and I'll never be able to thank Dollywood enough for that experience with, uh, the fact that she got on a roller coaster and rode it with him. Yeah. I've loved that ride too. Now, another park of mine, a uh, favorite of mine is Carowinds. You had a chance to attend the media event there. Uh, talk about, Talk about that and and what they have going on this year. Yeah, um, we actually made the trip after the Dollywood event. My uh, one of my editors and very close friends of mine, best friend Sean, went with me, and we went down to Carowinds. Um, it was a very special event for me because it was his first time ever going to Carowinds, so I got to get him on one of my top three roller coasters in Fury Three Twenty Five, which he absolutely loves but they're offering new food this year throughout the park um one thing that's very important to me um don and ryan both know that i am really big into the fitness world and healthy eating and stuff like that and the parks are starting to introduce that into um into their menus and like they had a uh they had a shrimp and rice option at the media event which was really good um full of protein and stuff and then they had other options. They're coming out with new drinks. They're coming out with new food options. Um, got to ride Thunderstriker, seeing the uh, new name there. Uh, Aeronautical Landing was the first time I got to see it, uh, especially at night. It was phenomenal. Um, I give Cedar Fair props for the theming that they put in that area and did for that. Um, but yeah, we had an absolute great time. We were able to ride on everything. And uh, got to talk to them about the food options, uh, future growth. They have festivals coming up this year. They have their new concert series that's coming, which they have some major headliners coming into that. So we're really excited about going out and checking that out later this year. And then we're going to hopefully get on to Scare Ones for the first time this year. 
Yeah, I've uh, I've always heard I haven't made it out to scare ones yet, but I've always heard that it's it's pretty cool. So uh, you mentioned Thunderstriker. What what are your thoughts on the name change? I I like it. I I like that they went with something different. <laughs> Um, I hope that there's more theming added to the area. I know that it was kind of a quick name change that they did down there. I like the boldness of the logo on the um, when you get the signage when you walk in. Um, but in my opinion, I don't have a problem with it. I like it a lot. I don't mind it either. You know, I think Jeremy, you and I might be in the minority, but I thought you know the signage looked good in front of the ride. Yeah. I think it kind of fits. You know, it's still got that NASCAR feel to it, so I liked it. Uh, but yeah. moving on to another Cedar Fair Park, uh, Dorney Park is set to debut its new dive coaster, Iron Menace, mid-April. Uh, your initial thoughts after seeing the POV that was released this week? It uh, it reminds me a lot of Cliffhanger um, <laughs> down at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. Um, I'm really excited about the closeness, quick movement of the coaster. I'm a big fan of dive coasters. Um, the more and more I keep riding them throughout the united states um i'm becoming a bigger and bigger fan of them so um, i'm looking forward to it i will be there on april 17th so uh make sure to be there and look out for content on buckeye coasters so that um we can show you anything and everything going on there we'll be there early in the morning through uh lunchtime so we're really excited so you 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 kind of mentioned uh uh, that you see the similarity with cliffhanger, but yeah, in Europe, but you, you didn't really tell us what you think about cliffhanger. So that, that, that okay. kind of segues in my next question. How do you think that iron menace will stack up against other dive coasters that you've ridden? So cliffhanger, I think is just an all around, um, great dive coaster. It has elements closeness. I'm really, I really like compact coasters, um, compact twists low line like cliffhanger really goes low to the ground um and it's final approach into the into the brakes um so i just love that sh i don't i don't need a ride to be super super long to enjoy it i know there's a, i know i'm in the minority there for sure um but um as long as a ride packs a punch for me and the elements are there uh, that's all that matters to me um so i think that this will probably be top three maybe we'll see i am going to be riding um yokon striker later this summer for my birthday i'm going up to uh, canada's wonderland for it so i'm excited about seeing that too um but i've ridden um val raven uh, shikra um the dive coaster at um bush gardens williamsburg as well so i've ridden a bunch of them so uh, yeah, I'm thinking maybe top three, depending on the punch that it packs, but you can never really tell from a POV because I know we saw a POV of cliffhanger and a lot of people were like down in the dumps about it. And it ended up being a really great, uh, coaster. I was there for media or for the media event for that. So, um, I'm really excited. It's Griffin is the one at Bush Gardens. Griffin, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I knew Griffin. that would bother you. <laughs> I know. I was, I was sitting there thinking like, what was it? But I just hope that the theming, I hope they keep the theming too. Like Cliffhanger, a lot of it's was theming. Uh, the pre-show there and everything like that was really cool. And I hope that the um, Iron Factory vibe mixes everywhere, that it, it allows that to be part of the um, experience as well. And yeah, Jeremy, I'm on the same page with you. With You know, you see a lot of the comments that, you know, it's too short. And it's not just with that ride, it's with other ones too. I would rather have a ride that's short, but it's just action packed, you know, just, you know, the elements and just all the different maneuvers and that, that it makes that it just makes it a fantastic ride. I think about uh, Raven and Holiday World, wooden coach yeah. short, but fantastic ride. So for me, I'm more about that than, uh, you know, I'd rather have that than a ride that's maybe 6,500 feet long and, you know, 3,000 feet of it. It's not doing anything. I know at Carowinds, Copperhead Strike, a lot of people don't think very highly or don't think much about it. And I absolutely love Copperhead Strike for that exact reason that you're talking about, all the elements and the quick turns and the airtime and everything else. So I agree with you. Yeah. Now, Holiday World, as I mentioned, uh, debuting a new family coaster, Good Gravy. Ryan and I, we've talked about this a lot. You know, we absolutely love the way uh, the park there, uh, the team knocked it out of the park 
with the marketing of the ride and you know, top of mind awareness everywhere for good gravy. Uh, yeah. What are your thoughts on the name, the theming and, and just the job that they've done there to get everyone excited about this family coaster? I think it's outstanding with a nine year old and a 12 year old who is super excited about this coaster. I think the whole area, the stuffing theme that they're going to have in the um, entire area there with the play area for the kids along with the giant whisk that you can walk in and out of the giant can of uh, cranberries that you're going to fly through during the ride. I, they knocked it out of the park. You're a hundred percent right. I'm really excited about going down and seeing it next month. Um, it's, I just think it's going to be a great all around the theming of the uh, house and being in the kitchen and everything else as we're watching this POV, it just, it's getting me super excited about going down there and seeing what holiday world has in store for it. Yeah. I think that the, um, the ride itself is going to be a lot of fun. And I think the elements that you, for those of you who are video list, uh, video watchers, I guess uh, you're, you're kind of enjoying the big set pieces and stuff. But one thing that people haven't really brought up is the, the queue is going to have grandma's house and stuff right. like that. Like, that's going to be really, really cool. So I, I think that's that's particularly exciting. But, um, you know, it, it, bringing things back, uh, you know, to the matter at hand, uh, it, this is a big year for Vacoma. You know, yeah. I, I, oh, in, this, in, this, in this market alone, you've got Snoopy Soapbox Racers at Kings Island uh, and uh, Good Gravy. Do you think that this might be like some sort of renaissance for Vacoma? Because it seems like they were everywhere in the 90s and then they disappeared for quite a while. And recently they've been coming back. Yeah, I think so. I think they're on the rise. Uh, I think they are realizing what they need to do and the niche that they need to um, to target. I feel like I, I've said this on a couple other uh, podcasts that I've been part of. I think the parks are realizing now that the enthusiasts are important, but on the other hand, the families are more important too, and that they need to start hitting that demographic of like my kids are nine and 12. I think they know that they need to start hitting that demographic as well, because if they don't, there won't be people at the parks. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think Vokoma is hitting it the right way with appealing. I mean, you can see it with RMC with their family coaster that they introduced uh, late last year. Yeah. Um, that, that type of coaster is coming um, that way. I mean, look at Penguin Trek that's going to be opening in hopefully in May. Um, going that family route that everybody in the family can enjoy it, just not your thrill seeker, I think is the way to go. Because I know my son was excited when Iron Gwazi opened. I was telling Don about how I was able to take him up there and ride uh, Iron Gwazi on media day. And he thought he was the biggest thing in the world. He got off that ride and we ended up riding six more times afterwards. So um, I think these, I think building these coasters that are in your 48, your 42 to 48 eight range and height is probably the best way to go right now to pull everybody into the parks. And Jeremy, it definitely changes your perspective as an enthusiast, doesn't it? When, you know, you go from, you know, always wanting to have the biggest, the fastest, the longest, all those kind of things. And then you've got kids. Yeah. And now you want to enjoy those rides with them. So it certainly changes the perspective, doesn't it? It, uh, it definitely does. I, I know I used to be that person years ago in 2015, 2016. That was, that was definitely me. And then uh, my life was changed when my daughter was four years old and was able to ride the beast for the first time at 48 inches. And the, and we went on a night ride and, and 17 and she was hooked. Um, so those are the incredible things that you do change what you're looking for when you do go for to a park, but then you have the situation that I told you about two weeks ago with my kids. Now at one point I had Hayden on the smaller rides, Addison wanting to ride the larger rides, my daughter, my 12 year old wanting to ride the big rides. Cause she was tall enough. Hayden not being tall enough, but he still wanted to ride them. So now I walk into Kings Island and I can't do anything other than diamond back into Orion because that's all they want to ride. <laughs> so, so yeah, it's, Kids definitely make a are definitely a um, factor, for sure. You know, let's move on to Cedar Point Top Thrill Two. Uh, what are your thoughts on what they've done with re reimagining Top Thrill Dragster? I'm actually super excited about it. Uh, the comments of people saying that it's slower and stuff. 
look at what they've done. Um, Zamperilla has done an amazing job thinking and thinking outside the box and doing what they're doing right now. I personally have not got to see the spike in, in person yet, and I'm really looking forward to seeing it. Um, Steve, who is uh, one of our uh, co-founders and one of my best friends, he got to go up there at Winter Chill Out, and he said, when you stand next to it, it lights out, like looking up at that spike. So I'm really, really excited um about the experience i got i did not get to ride top thrill with hayden so um because he wasn't tall enough yet addison and i did get to get did get to experience top thrill so i'm kind of happy that i'm i'm going to make sure that i ride with hayden first on top thrill too just for the fact that i can say that i have that experience with him but um i'm really excited about it what do you guys think i love it i think it's uh you know it's definitely a game changer for uh Zamperla. And I think that, you know, it, the ride was just problem plug. They had to do something with it oh, yeah. you know, to make it more reliable. And I think they're going to have that there. And the other thing about it is there's nothing else like it in the world. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. yeah. And it's uh, the swing launch is uh, kind of a cool thing, too. If you've ever ridden uh, Pantheon, that's Pantheon what it kind of makes great. me think of, you know? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Um, but let me ask you this. This actually was a listener question. Uh, so it'd be interesting to get your take on it. Who do you think has more at stake? Cedar Point or Zamperla with the Top Thrill 2 project? I think Cedar Point does. Really? I really do. I, I think Cedar Point has more to show and more to do with uh, the situation. Zamperla is not known for it, so... I mean, if it if it doesn't succeed for them, it's they can look at it from, in my opinion, they can look at it as well. It's not our niche yet, um, but I think Cedar Point needs to, I, they need to hit it out of the park, and I think they're going to. Um, and I wish them completely, one hundred percent, the best on this. Um, but from what I'm seeing, the signage, I don't know if you two got to see the signage that they I did. They yeah. they uh, put out yesterday. I mean, they are they're upping their game from that standpoint for sure. Uh, walking underneath that archway um, into the ride area is going to I think going to be great. Um, I'm really excited about the swing launch though that you brought up, Brian. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's going to be great being able to be that close and seeing the swing launch. Um, cause like you mentioned with Pantheon, which is an outstanding coaster in itself, um, that's away from everything. Um, so yeah, I think it's gonna, I think Cedar fair has it, but I think they're going to knock it out of the park. Yeah. I think Cedar point, I agree that it, it's, they've got the most at stake because it has to work. It has to be reliable. Uh, you know, what it's replacing the problems you had with that, you know, would have yeah. been, um, like Kings Island, if they'd have tried to, to do something with Son of Beast and make right. that work, you know, it would have yeah. had to work the first time. They cannot start the season and the ride has an abundance of downtime. That can't happen. I mean, it has I to agree. work from the media event on. It has to be reliable and, mm-hmm. you know, it has to work. Zamperla, like you said, you know, if it doesn't work. They took their swing and, you know, yeah. they're still great at what they do with the, with the family right. coasters and that. So, uh, yeah, I, I think for me, there's a lot of pressure on Cedar Point. I agree. I, the thing to consider, though, for me to play devil's advocate here, because I think that you answered that way, Don, uh, kind of similar to Jeremy's answer when we took this original listener question months ago, saying that it it has to be right for Cedar Point. And I don't disagree with that. But for me, it's like Zamperla clearly has put a lot of R&D into these trains. They've put a lot of focus on these big rides and stuff. This is their shot. And if it doesn't work out well, like, who knows, like what they had to do to, I mean, the R and D for a train like that, I, I I don't know how much it costs to do that, but I imagine it's astounding just from the industry people we've talked to. So I think that uh, it's debatable as to which one uh, has more at stake, but I certainly think that this will, if it doesn't work out very well, this will be horrible egg on Zamperla's face. So we're rooting for both Cedar Point. And yeah, we are. And, and I do feel that it's going to work. I, I think I both sides yeah, are going to be I, I really feel I, good about it. I think, like you said, the trains, I think 
once it is successful, those trains will probably change the industry altogether. I mean, I think they're going to have a major effect on the industry. They're light. They're I, they're either well lit or less well. Yeah. It's yeah. That is everything that the industry wants right now. You Absolutely. Know? Yeah, and how more... sharp those trains look, right? Those trains. Oh, oh my gosh. They oh, uh they, great. They tweeted this morning. Uh, I think Tony put like, "Yes, they come in black." Let me see if I can find that because that's worth sharing. <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves while I pull this yeah, up. Yeah, I, I, I want to give Tony. I want to give Trump, Tony some props here. I mean, he has done a fantastic job with promoting this. Uh, he's had that series on YouTube. Yeah, he's I think the series updates. is great. Uh, you know, he's just done a great job building the anticipation for it, answering everybody's questions that they have mm -hmm. about it. You know, and if they didn't have an answer, he was transparent. We don't know. You know, so I really like the job that Tony has done with this. Yeah, they're yeah. not hiding. They're not hiding anything. I mean, they're. I, Look at the construction updates and stuff. I mean, they're giving it to us as soon as they can, and they have everybody giving us feedback on it too. I mean, you have your construction manager, you have your rides ops. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's great seeing everybody involved too. Yeah, I completely agree. And uh, so, for those of you who are smart enough to be video people right now, let's pull it up. So, look at that train. Oh, oh yeah, that looks really good. Yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it's beautiful. Uh, I, whew, look at that it's so for audio listeners uh, basically uh, you know what the train looks like if you listen to this podcast but essentially it's uh it's black it's all black like a shiny metallic black but it's got red red kind of like arm bars for the restraints and then the restraints like the lap platter is actually black Ooh, yeah, that's the, so good looking the red pops for sure oh i know i can't i i i think roller coaster trains are like so cool looking like a lot of people are into cars like oh look at that corvette i couldn't care less but yeah. like that's why you i look like at that the picture too of that train i mean doesn't it just it just screams comfortable doesn't it it does and i i think the biggest thing too is is they're going to allow more people to experience this ride that may not have been able to experience it in the past yeah from i i was talking to somebody else about this earlier today actually so my understanding is that they put a lot of thought into uh, a lower, like, so we, shall we say reject rate for people of mm -hmm. different body proportions, because it, it's so hard to describe that to people because it's not like, oh, you weigh 300 pounds. Yeah. You can ride this, this, and this. It's like, oh, you're, you're thick around the thighs, but you weigh 86 pounds <sighs> and yeah. ride that right. You know, it's so weird and it's just, there's no great way to do it. And so the fact that Zamperla had that in mind when designing this is, is definitely going to be a net positive for the industry. Um, so, uh, Don, I think you had a question next. Yeah. Um, Jeremy, as a Cedar Point fan for you, is it Millennium Force or Steel Vengeance? If you could only ride one for the rest of your life. People are going to hate me for this, but it's Millennium Force. I just, I'm on the I same just, page. I, I love I, Millennium Force. Don, it, until Fury was built, it was my number one there just because it's an all around just great coaster there's nothing you can complain about it not at all that is the complete package i mean everything about it is just great 100 percent agree do you guys own stock in intimate or something say something <laughs> negative no it's well uh, i full disclosure so i would choose money and force as well because i think steel vengeance uh as far as rewritability that is a downfall of it because yeah. it's very aggressive and you know, as you get to be uh, middle-aged men like ourselves and uh, an AARP member like Don, uh, <laughs> the, the rewrite ability becomes questionable at times. But um, I actually, the first time I rode Millennium Force, didn't like it. I, it was so hyped to me that I was like, eh, when I actually rode it. But, um, you know, in recent years, just going up there a little bit more often, just riding it more and more, it's like, you know, the speed, you, know, you got the, like that airtime at the very end, like eh, maybe it is kind of cool, you know? It's one of those rides that when the train comes back into the station, you want to get right back in line and ride it again. Certainly. And then you want to ride it again. Then you wanted to ride it again. Uh, if that was the only coaster I ever rode at Cedar Point, I'd be happy. I mean, I just love that ride. I do too. Uh, and it would not be the same if it weren't for the placement right next to the lake. Do you agree? That adds to it. It does. Yeah. Well, I mean, for me, it's kind of like, uh, comparatively speaking, I think that uh, Intimidator 305, now Project 305, I guess, 
Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's a superior ride it, just because it, I think it offers more on the plate. But the placement of Millennium Force just makes it so perfect. It, it's going to be really hard to beat that. Just really, oh, really yeah. cool. So uh, speaking of uh, Cedar Point, <laughs> I guess, what a segue. What are your thoughts on the merger between Six Flags and Cedar Fair? Oh, this is a tough one, um, to be honest with you. Uh, with the business background that I have for being in an industry for a corporate industry for 16 years, I understand aspects of the merger. Mm -hmm. um, being a former Cedar uh, Paramount, then Cedar Fair, because I was part of Cedar Fair uh, for one year. Um, I was actually there the morning that they came down and said, guys, you do not work for um paramount anymore you work for cedar fair um and that was different um that was completely different and so for the employees i just tell them to bear with them yeah and um everything will be okay i think from an operation standpoint and everything like that i think it's big for six flags um because i have experienced a couple six flags parks and i think they're added um the way that Six Flags or Cedar Fair operates their rides and everything will benefit Six Flags a lot. Um, right now, I think both of them need each other, though. Um, I think they both will benefit from it in the end as long as it goes through. Yeah. So. Thoughts on Epic Universe? That seems to be the, uh, you know, it's taken the industry by storm. It seems like every couple of days there's something new that they're putting out there on social media that yeah. uh, just gets people talking. Yeah, uh, 328 is going to be a big day. Um, they are making a big noise. I'm expecting that we're going to see our next uh, portal or next land be announced. Um, rumor is it's going to be How to Train Your Dragon. That's um, what I've heard too. And I'll be honest with you, being able to see a park as an engineer and as a, the type of enthusiast that I am that you both know that I don't, I don't, it's just not about the big ride for me. It's about every aspect of it. I am like, I'm just like head over heels about this whole project. Cause I was down there when it was just a piece of dirt mm -hmm. and being able to see it as we've gone over the years, it's just it, Epic universe is going to change the industry in my opinion in a good way yeah what well, is there any uh like any particular aspect of of uh epic universe that's either been announced or that has heavily speculated that particularly excites you um i like the idea of the portals yeah. and being able to literally i mean diagon alley kind of has that portal feeling um, and the first time I got to see my kids go into Diagon Alley and see it transform to the, the movie, I think a lot of people are going to enjoy that. I'm really excited about uh, Nintendo World and the Donkey Kong coaster. I think the Donkey Kong coaster is going to change the industry forever. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that you're able to hop, skip on a roller coaster is, I think, going to be a game changer. Um, but I like how that land also satisfies the those with the yoshi ride those who don't want high motion or anything like that to the mario kart so i'm really excited about that but i think the dark universe area that they're saying it's going to be i think that's going to be a game changer as well i think dark universe is going to be very uh neat yeah i think you're right i mean the, the industry's just not going to be the same after this opens next year and i can't wait right. to experience it and uh, you know, it also, it, it puts a lot of pressure on Disney too, doesn't it? Yeah, that was what I was just going to actually mention is I think that the uh, president, when he mentioned the fact that this will make Universal a place to go for a week um, is true. I, Volcano Bay, I, my family is a huge water park uh, fans. We love water parks. And I feel like I'm in a, I feel like I'm in a tropical environment when you're at Volcano Bay, you have no clue that you're sitting in central Florida. Um, when you do that, when you go there, um, 
and then to be able to have the other two parks and then epic i think people will be staying there for five or six days a week now because of it yeah yeah i i, I don't disagree uh the thing that's weird about disney though uh, or really about florida is that uh when one benefits they all benefit and mm-hmm. but this is going to be a strange situation because if Epic Universe is drawing people to Central Florida, then Disney's going to benefit from that. But Universal's marketing strategy isn't to beat Disney. Their, no. their strategy is to, if you were going to do two days at Universal and three days at Disney, we want to peel off one of those days. Right. And and this is a really good strategy for that. <laughs> I agree. I don't, uh, yeah, I don't, I agree with you completely. I don't think that they're there to try to one up them or anything like that. I think they're just doing exactly what you said, giving. The, well, it, it's, I, I don't necessarily think it's fair to say that they're not trying to one up them. They, they there's certainly competition there, Yeah, but, but uh, d- they're not stupid too. Like they know, yeah. they know what they're up against. They know they're up against a property that's bigger than Manhattan that has 50 mm-hmm. something resorts and four major parks and two water parks and a campground. They just don't have that. Right. You know? So, but if they can pull you away with Harry Potter, you know, mm-hmm. we'll, we'll take one extra day. And then one day, you know, they've got enough room from what I understand on that property that's down by the Orlando Eye that um, they could build another epic universe and another water park. That's so crazy. the possibilities are very, very endless for this. Like you said, I believe it's going to benefit the entire state mm-hmm. for sure. And the industry. Yeah. So Jeremy, just one more time, where can we find you and Buckeye Coasters on social media? So we are on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We have recently this year um, launched and focused on our YouTube page. So uh, please check that out. Um, I am posting a lot of my experiences. I've This year I've started actually doing a lot of more on-camera um, videoing and uh, doing experience videos instead of just taping off-ride footage or P- on-ride POVs and stuff. Um, recently, like Sean got to, I mentioned earlier, got to ride Fury for the first time. So like I did a Fury 325 video where we showed the queue and we showed the station and load, unload some off-ride footage. Then I asked Sean what he thought about the ride. So we're trying something new there. So if you're in, into that type of stuff and seeing the whole experience, except and not just the ride itself, uh, please check those out. Um, we go all over the United States. We've gone as far as Texas. We hope to go to California here soon. Uh, we've been to the middle or to the central plains. We've been out to Adventureland. Um, we've been all over Florida, all over Texas. Uh, we've been on the East Coast. I have um, editors who are on the East Coast for me that record all the time from Bush Gardens, Carowinds, Kings Dominion. We're, uh, we have somebody that we're bringing on in California as well to the team that's going to give us some California uh, feedback. I have somebody in Texas that I get feedback from as well, along with I have a, a good friend internationally that uh, we're getting info from them too as well. So uh, we're continuing to grow. And it's because of my followers and people like yourself, Don and Ryan, supporting me. The page continues to grow, and uh, I do it for you guys. In the end, I, I don't benefit from it other than the fact that it's a passion. But I love sharing my experiences, not only from a ride standpoint, but from merch to um, food to any aspect of the uh, park at all. Uh, at all along with zoos and aquariums too we just don't we just don't hold back at amusement parks and theme parks we do zoos uh we're very big fans of the columbus zoo we do uh, museums and stuff so we're we're uh we encompass that whole part of the industry for sure cool awesome well thank you so much for being on the show we really appreciate it guys it was a true honor and a pleasure to be part of this i'm very grateful for the opportunity well, the pleasure all right. is all ours. So make sure that you look up, look up Buckeye Coasters on all the social media platforms that Jeremy had mentioned. Facebook, yes. Instagram, YouTube. Uh, and uh, Jeremy, we come back again in a couple Absolutely. months. We can talk about the things that are happening over the summer. Absolutely. Anytime. Awesome. It's a pleasure. Cool. All right. Well, 
Stick around, everybody. We got the pick six up next.